Hey everybody, welcome back to Web Inspect. I am Timothy Miller, your host. Today we're going to talk about Docker. What is Docker? Docker is many things to many different people. For me, it's just a very good way of speeding up my workflow, and I hope I can convince you that it is a good way to do that. Docker has saved me more time in the last couple of years than any other tool that I've worked with. It saves me more time than my text editor, it saves me more time than any sort of JavaScript library or CSS library that I use. It saves me more, it saves me so much time. And I would like to show you today just a very simple way that you can use it in your own workflow. Before I show you how to use Docker, let's talk about what I used to do for client work and for the websites that I worked on. I used to use a tool called MAMP, which stands for, it's the Mac version of a server that sits on your computer with, it has Apache, MySQL, and PHP built in. So all you have to do is install this and you drop your websites into a folder and it runs them for you. Now all of that works pretty well until I got my first real job where it had an existing code base that I had to download onto my computer and figure out how to make it work. And the thing was, this first project, it had a old version of PHP, an old version of MySQL, and it was just kind of, it became a nightmare working with this because it was different from all of the other projects I had on my computer. And with MAMP, I don't know if you guys have used MAMP, but with MAMP, if you want to change the version, you have to go in the preferences, you change the versions of all the things to be the version you want it to be, and then you restart the whole thing and you, now you've fixed one site, but you've broken all of your other sites. So this was a pretty serious problem for me because the more projects I got, the more of a nightmare it was managing my own local server. So this is where Docker comes in. Docker allows you to create one file that has all of the configuration your, your site needs in it. It has a list of all the different services it needs, all the different servers it needs, and how they connect in this one file. Um, and then you can run one command and it spins all those up for you in the background. It's amazing, it's like magic, and it works flawlessly. Even better, you can take that file and add it to your project so that anyone else who has your project can run that same command, and it just works. It saves me so many headaches and it helps so much with collaboration when you can tell someone just download my project, run Docker Compose up, and you're golden. It's just, it's just really, really nice. So I don't have anything else to say to sell you on it. Let me jump in and show you exactly how easy it is to get started with this. So here's the Docker website. There's actually not that much on this homepage that is really interesting to show you. If you're on a Mac, you want, you want Docker for Mac. If you're on Windows, you want Docker for Windows. Um, so you can just search for that. It's like this, it'll be the first result, Docker for Mac. So you download this app, um, and after you have it downloaded, you should see an icon up here in your um, in your menu up here. If you're on Windows, it'll be down in your systems tray down here, um, and this will just tell you that Docker is running. There's really not that much that you need up here. If you have an account, you can log in. You don't really need to if you don't want to, um, but it can be useful for some things. Now that you have it installed, you should have access to it in your terminal, and that's where things really start to get good. So you should be able to verify that you have it installed by switching to your terminal, run the Docker command, and it'll give you this big help, big help text. So there are really two ways that I know of to interface with Docker, and I should preface this with the fact that I am a bit of a Docker neophyte. That's why this is a practical, guide to using Docker because it is exclusively from the perspective of a working professional who manages a couple dozen projects a year, who switches between them constantly, and this is just a way of showing you guys what a powerful tool this is for someone like me. So one way that you can use Docker is directly through the command line. You can do like a docker run command. And Docker run allows you to run one container at a time. This can be useful, it, but it's not usually very useful for me because I don't like remembering all the things that you have to remember to use Docker run. And I generally have more complicated things to run than just one container. So I use Docker compose. Just so you guys can see, this is what a normal Docker command usually looks like. This is telling it to run a new container at port 80 using a using my local file system here and that's like a, that's a sim link kind of adding your files to this docker container and then the name of the container so that's kind of what that's kind of what a normal docker run command looks like i don't like it like i said because then i have to remember 
all of this command line stuff. I much prefer to just run one command and be done with it. So let me show you how to do that. If you want to be lazy like me and only have to remember one command to run, then basically the way you do that is using a Docker Compose file. Docker Compose is a tool that comes with Docker, it's bundled with Docker, and it essentially lets you run multiple Docker containers um, in parallel and it lets you link them together in ways so that you can essentially build your whole your whole server stack in one file. So you always start your Docker Compose file with a version, and then you have to define what services you want. So services, and I'm just going to do like a basic WordPress install because I, I organize a lot of WordPress sites like this, and I find it to be a super useful tool for managing WordPress sites. So the first thing you need for a WordPress site is a MySQL server. So I'll do MySQL. This is just the name of your service. It doesn't really matter what this is, but I'm going to call it MySQL. Um, and the first thing you define for a service is the type of image that you need. An image is just kind of a recipe for Docker to pull. So it's a recipe of something that you want it to pull. Um, in this case, it's just going to be the MySQL recipe. Um, so we'll do image. MySQL, um, and you can also specify a version number. So if you search for Docker MySQL, you will find the documentation here. Um, so this is the official MySQL repository, and it tells you all the different versions you can use. Um, I usually use 5.7. I'm not sure why, that's just kind of what I, uh, what a lot of servers that I use come with. So, and you can define this it, the specificity goes, you know, most specific to least specific. So you can do 5.7.22, you can do 5.7, or you can do just 5. Or you can do latest and it'll just pull the latest version. I wouldn't usually do that because um, you don't want, you don't want it to just break randomly, or you don't want the possibility of it breaking randomly when MySQL updates. So let's go back to our terminal and we'll just do 5.7. Next you can do this restart. Always, I always kind of like to use this restart because WordPress a lot of times fires up faster than MySQL um, and it errors out. So having it restart when it errors is, is useful for a lot of things. And then also for a database, you need some environment variables. I'm not sure if they talk about this over here. I think they do. Yeah, so environment, MySQL root password. So this talks about the environment variables here and you need four of these for WordPress. You need the root password. Go back to my command line. Um, to do environment variables, you start with environment. You need the root password. You need a database. Let's just copy this a few times. So you need a database. You need a user and you need a password. These are kind of the same things that you have to set in a WordPress config file, essentially these three things. So just for simplicity, I usually just set these to WordPress, just like that. So now we've got the configuration set up for this database, and this is really all you need to get started with a MySQL database. Next, we need to add the WordPress side of this, and there is actually a WordPress, WordPress image, which is super useful. Um, when you're searching for images, guys, it's usually best to look for these official versions. That's how you know that, you know, it's, it's officially supported by the company that runs this. Same thing as MySQL, you can, you can do a version. I'm not going to do a version for this. I'm just going to do, um, I'm just going to do WordPress. So we will do, set the, we will set the name of the service. We'll do an image, WordPress. Now WordPress needs to know that it depends on the MySQL image. So we will do depends on, and we'll do a dash MySQL. And this is just the name of this container up here. So it's just saying this image depends on this other image to run. So depends on, then we do a, then we need to add a link to the MySQL database. All right, and then we're going to need a way to interact with this in browser, so we need to give it a port number. Ports, and then I usually, it doesn't really matter what you map it to. The first one is the port number that will be on your machine. The second one you just want to be 80 because it maps to, um, 
the default port on your container. Then we'll add the same restart always. It's just always seems helpful to have that. And then WordPress also does need an environment variable. It needs to be told about the database password. So we will do environment WordPress DB password. And that is the same as above. All right, guys, now we're going to save this Docker Compose file. Now, I think if I'm right, I think this is all you need to get started with a WordPress site. And I will post a link to this code down in the description if you want to read it yourself and, you know, or copy paste it into something. But now let me show you our file system. So I saved this Docker Compose file in a Docker file. And there's also a DB folder here. We'll get to that in a minute. But there's nothing else in here. It's just a Docker Compose file and a folder. So there's no WordPress install. There's no nothing. But if we run this in, if we go back to our terminal, we're already, we're already in that Docker directory. So if we run Docker Compose up, it's going to pull any, any images that it doesn't already have on your machine. It will pull. So that's what it's doing here. Just pulling down the files it needs for the MySQL database and I already had the WordPress. So now it's just gonna start dumping logs out. As you can see, these are the logs for MySQL and for WordPress as they start up. So now I think we've got everything started up. It was really just, I mean, it was super fast, just like that. So if we go back here, if we go to localhost port 8080, and here we go, we have the default WordPress install. So there's how you can very easily get started with a WordPress image in Docker on your machine. There's just one problem with this, and that is if we go back to our file system, you can see there are no files in here. And it's a little bit hard to work on a website that you can't see the files for. And another thing, another thing is a lot of times for me, when I'm doing this, I'm not starting from scratch. I usually have another website that I'm copying. So it's nice to have a really quick, easy way to like import the database and import the files and then just spin that server up. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. Um, but if you don't need that, then this is a really good, easy way to spin up a basic WordPress site that you can mess around with. Um, and this install works just like it usually does. You just give it a name and a, you create yourself a user and you're good to go. Super, super quick and easy. But if you are one of the people who already has a database, already has files, then I'm going to talk about that next. So if we jump back to visual code, there are a couple of things that we need to add to our Docker Compose file. We need to tell it that we already have a database and that we already have files. So I've got this WordPress database here already ready. It's just a basic database I created earlier. I'm going to dump that into this folder and I'm actually going to put that into this DB folder. It doesn't have to be in this DB folder. I just like having a DB folder just for cleanliness, I guess. So the MySQL image has a built-in way to let you import your own database. Um, so, and to do that, you need to create a volume. A volume is just a container or it's a it's just a folder on your computer that is linked inside the docker container so when you change that folder on your computer that folder in the docker container updates automatically so we'll set up a volume and for this the first half of this command is a relative path to the folder that has your db file if you just have it in the root you can just do dot slash i've got it in a db folder so i'm going to do that and then after the colon, you want um, this special command that lets, lets the MySQL image know that you want to import a database. And that is a slash docker entry point dash init db dot d. So that's just kind of a special, it's a special file that it will run and look for an SQL dump inside of your db folder. So we'll save that. WordPress is very similar. So I don't have any WordPress files to dump in here offhand, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. You just add this volumes in here and then you do dot slash, you do the same colon, and then there's a special directory. This is just an Apache thing. You put it inside of var dot www slash html. And that's how 
you symlink the files on your machine with Docker. But I'm going to get rid of that. Just going to use the default stuff. I'm just focusing on the DB, so I'm importing this DB. Now, we've already created we've already created this. So if we just run Docker up again, it's going to reuse what it's already got. So what we have to do is we need to run Docker compose rm, and that's going to remove the containers that we already created. So we do that, and then we do docker compose up, and this time it should import the database that we've already got in there. We'll give it a few seconds just to spin everything up, and then we go back to our Firefox, we'll get rid of this URL, and Ta-da! So no installation process this time because I imported the database, so it already knows it's got that. And you can see this is a quick example site for a Docker tutorial. And guys, that is how you use Docker on a WordPress site. It's the same process for anything else. Using a Docker Compose file is my favorite way to interface with Docker. It's just super easy, super simple, and I love having this one file in your project that just spells out exactly what you need for for this project. It's just super useful when you have a bunch of different projects that have competing requirements. So guys, those are my thoughts on Docker. That is just a very simple scratch on the surface of what you can do with Docker. This is my favorite way to use it, my favorite thing to do. You guys should dig in, um, figure out if there are more things that I'm not talking about, more things that you're missing, that I'm missing. And if you want more Docker content in the future, just let me know and we'll, we'll see what we can do. But for now guys, remember that programming is hard. It's difficult. We all struggle with this stuff, but in the end, you can do it. You do have what it takes and we'll catch you next time. Bye.